But yes, oh, Mike Check 95 out. with Krieger Margin 1, and we are finished with episode 2 of um, The Fall of the House of Usher. And I think we might have quite a bit to unbox from this episode. <laughs> What do you think? This episode's runtime was a little bit... It was about 10 minutes longer. Oh, mm-hmm. my God. Um, so there's I some things I take. really didn't like about this episode, and there's some things I really liked about the episode. And the ending just tied it all together and made me uh, overall like the episode because of the way it ended. I think you but, and I are probably not going to like the same things, but I think my reasoning for not liking them is... Like that's that's what they were going for as the theme of this episode, and that's it, it was supposed to make you not like it. I think that's what what's going to per se. But yeah, because because it feels like as the episode goes on, they're making you just absolutely hate that person and think that they almost deserve what's happening. Then, then you're like, holy shit. At the same time, I don't think anybody does that. Um, yeah, that was super graphic, and it was like everyone there. Everyone there. Um, and uh, I kind of feel like, you know, scenes that kind of stick with you growing up, the, there, there's one movie that, <laughs> that that just made me think of for um, what movie was that? Ghost Ship. Oh, the intro scene to Ghost Ship. Yeah. It's just a whole crowd full of people, and it's just like a shock. Like it's, this, you kind of knew that he was going to die and something was going to happen. You know, they kind of played up to that, but holy shit, I was not expecting acid at all. Yeah, <laughs> I was we like, thought it was like, um, him getting burned or like burned alive or something. Yeah, I expected since it was a sprinkler system, the sprinklers weren't working, right? So they were going <laughs> to... Um, the, 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 they weren't going to be able to put out a fire, and the chick was going to... I thought she was going to lock him in that room and he couldn't get out, and then it was going. And I, and I, I wasn't going to think it was as good. But yeah. then they pulled that shit, and I'm like, holy shit! And then she gave him like the kiss of death, and it's like, is she death itself? Is mm-hmm. she the devil? Is she human? Does she represent the seven deadly sins coming after? Her? What it was? Yeah, like you and I were both kind of saying stuff like you were saying like seven deadly sins. I was saying like she like a grim reaper of some sorts and everything. It's yeah. Um. But whatever this is, she's clearly made a deal with the family. With, yeah. Um, what also kind of alludes to that, um, some small details, is whenever she said we should get, we could have had all kinds of, uh, like me and people like you get along really well. Probably mm-hmm. those kind of people are easy to manipulate and and, and uh, to get get to make deals like that. So that's probably yeah. what I took from that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, my um, theory, my theory is that there, there's seven episodes after the intro. Each one of the episodes, a kid dies. Apparently, yeah, up to this I even, point, I sorry. even pointed out saying like there were six kids and there's uh, seven episodes left. So from episode two to episode seven, each episode is going to explain how each kid died, and then the last episode is going to be. Probably like the tie in be all end all with the dad or something. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, what you. about the title? Uh, the the, ma- the Mask of the Red Death? It I mean, fits there's. With the ending theme with her coming in wearing a red riding hood cloak and 
I think that's how it goes. Like somebody comes in with like a red cloak and a skull face, and like when they yeah. leave, everyone's dead. Yeah, and I think that's what it is. Is the mm-hmm. these are the, the each one is also tying into a, a, a work of Edgar Allan Poe as well. Yeah. So it's like, like a culmination of of his work. Yeah, I don't know a lot of these other than I really know the Telltale. That's the one I know mm-hmm. a lot about. So, but who knows? There might be one with, uh, oh, episode eight, The Raven. I bet you. To the birds. The um, <laughs> <laughs> um, any, anyway, so, um, so, uh, what, what do you have to cover? Before? I mean, okay, so, like, I was doing a lot of guessing, basically, because like we, like you and I were like mainly trying to focus on like who was the one who's being the mole, the informant to the feds and everything. I yeah. am trying to figure out like who is this mysterious bartender lady? Like who is she in this whole like ordeal and everything? And like yeah, now that that episode kind of tells me more like okay, like she has. This, she has to be some sort of like higher power of like evil of some sort. And like you said, yeah. like made it like the, the, the parents and everything. And now she's coming back to basically have them pay for their, like their debt or their sins for everything that they've done. Cause they made a lot of deals and promises and you know, like, I mean, maybe they can't keep their end of the bargain. So now she's just going to pick them off one by one and say, hey, well, I, this is your payment. This is your payment. This is your payment. <laughs> well, yeah, well, there's there's uh, examples of deals where you get something for a certain amount of time. Mm-hmm. And then and then and then you have to pay a price after that. So they say, hey, yeah. we're going to give you this business. It's going to prosper. It's going to prosper for 40 years. Okay, you're gonna build a great, a great empire, children. And then when when the time has come, you'll pay a price. And they don't tell you what the price is. And now maybe the the kids are the price. Just killing all, killing all of the kids. Yeah, I think so. And I don't know. It's just like I just find it really interesting how like out of this whole show, this lady is like the one character. I'm like most intrigued about like i'm trying to figure out who she is over everything else like all the other elements are interesting and like funny or like unnerving or kind of like unbearable or like they're playing the role that they're going to play as but this is the one variable where you're just like who the who the fuck is she why is she here and um why did she melt that kid's entire body and friends and Party goers to pretty much look like bar. Lust. <laughs> um, it's like the movie Seven. Um, anyways, uh, fuck. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what to take of her yet. I don't think we have enough information. Um, I don't think we got a really good clue into on who, who's the snitch either. Um, I, I if anything, the conversation with the mom mm-hmm. um i would i would say the mom probably uh is the stepmom is probably less of a candidate not ruled out but less of a candidate to the sister yeah um because in that episode the mom she came across as not intelligent i don't think that she could unless she's just fronting it to make her look like she's not intelligent but i think it's more of the sister like the the sister is kind of so she's cutthroat when she's young, right? So she's yeah. on purposely having her niece was it or whatever that younger the younger relative cloned by an AI. Yeah, I feel like that's something that's just over kind of overlooked. But I mean, do you think there's implications on that? I mean, there could be. I mean. It seems kind of. Why would they do that? Pretty much what you would. I, there's got to be some weird agenda behind it, honestly. Yeah, there's no way that that's just a throwaway thing. You know what I mean? 
Just um, randomly go do an artificial intelligence of my of my <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I definitely keep an eye out for that. Mm-hmm. Um man, I know they're doing it on purpose, but it just made me so I said I felt uncomfortable last last one. This one really made me feel uncomfortable. The just the sheer amount of nudity, the sexuality behind yeah, that was my main issue was the the amount of like nudity and sex they had in this episode. But when you That's later explain that, it, when you later explain that this could be like a a seven deadly sins kind of thing, yeah, it started to kind of make more sense. And that's where my point was saying like that's my one negative is that all of the yeah I feel like stuff we didn't need, but now that it it could be an idea of lust then it's like okay i hate it but that's only because they make you want to hate it so they did this on purpose yeah and and um and that's just kind of how flanagan directs his stuff is it it, it, he it it gets tied together with a bow very nice towards the end of it he plays Um, with he's played with your fucking emotions yes i was very uh I was back and forth in this episode. It's, at certain points, I'm like, wow, this kind of sucks. At other points, I'm like, wow, that's great. And then when the acid came down, I was like, oh, this is fucking fantastic. Because it's even more <laughs> is because – so the the dude was all about – I talked about in the thing. That guy was absolutely the highest high he can live, right? He's yeah. looking up in anticipation, waiting for, that, uh, waiting for the drugs to come down. I'm assuming it was LSD put in there. And he was like, oh, yeah, we're going to get so fucking high ever and then it's just fucking at it's death that he's that he that he's debating and this consequence of his actions what they're saying is how how you're thrill seeking so much and you're sinning like this and this is the result of what you mm-hmm. oh. especially for the, probably the terrible thing that he did was trying to sleep with his not only sleep with his brother's wife but try to get her to go to an order yeah. And get orgified. <laughs> orgified. <laughs> and I quote 2023, orgified. <laughs> um, okay, um, so I've got some more checklist stuff, but um, do you have any major points you want to hit before I just kind of rattle off some things I liked? Not really. Like I said, I didn't really take too many notes in this one because like, I was more... Like, this is what happens when I get more intrigued into a story. I focus more on, like, the story and want to talk about, like, elements of it and try yeah. not to make a checklist of notes. So, like, if, it, if the you. show, basically, if I'm not taking notes during a, a, a show and I'm not saying anything super negative about it, that's a good sign. <laughs> yeah. If we got two pages, we've done the positive and negatives before. And I got, like, four pages of negatives and shit. I'm just like, mm, I'm nitpicking here, boys. <laughs> Resident Evil at this point. <laughs> Yeah, um, <laughs> I had like six pages. <laughs> Anyways, um, so the uh, one thing I didn't like at the beginning of the episode is, it, which I laughed at it, and you laughed at it too. He said this office is as white as cream cheese. Um, that's funny, <laughs> but this is also supposed to be like a whole drama thing. Um, mm-hmm. It's. I felt like that was another thing that I talked about last episode where I'm like, they, they've got to start being more serious on and obviously, it's 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 getting there, yeah. and this next one's everyone's gonna be like, oh shit, this person died, and and things are gonna yeah, get darker. It's, but it's, I just I thought that was funny. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know why I wrote down demons run amok, but I think that was a quote there. Oh, that was oh the black guy. He was talking about how how demons are just running amok, and I was like, oh, that's interesting. That you know. Mm-hmm. And here um, it is, a little possible demon running around going, hello, savage, savage. Tying in on what we said on our episode one review, one thing I feel like they're doing really well here is we were talking about how it's difficult because they're trying to do a story that originated a long time ago and tying it in today. One thing they're yeah. doing very well is they are taking the historical story and they're putting in a current issue with today's politics and everything, with pain, the painkiller academ- um, epidemics. Um, yeah. So uh, I think they like the first quarter of this episode was tying that in. 
giving us more of a because before we uh, you know I just thought it was a, a placeholder for like uh, for heavier duty droids, but it's an actual in between mm-hmm. that's supposed to be used where it's it's more than IV pro, but it's not enough to need to get addicted. And they said it's it's not addictive. So um, I I think that. I think that's a the, the great tie in the way they did that. Yeah, and that was one of my biggest concerns about the last episode. How like I didn't know how that, that um if they were going to be able to uh, tie this story into like a modern ice kind of style if they're using Edgar Allan Poe's like work. But I feel like this pe- previous episode, granted, it was very uncomfortable and kind of icky to watch. Uh, they did a really good job. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I agree. I think think Icky's the main word for this episode. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, this is just an incredibly uncomfortable thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's see what else. Uh, Just the stepmom, she has a history of drug addiction. um, So Mm -hmm. that might come into play later. Um, She doesn't seem entirely intelligent or know how to be a stepmom. If anyone's ever been step one before you probably don't tell your kid when it's time to bond hey yeah. i met your father because i said i'd give him a blowjob and i gave him a blowjob and here i am it's like what, <laughs> what you... Hello. um the way other people talk in in this series sounds like poetry when that lady talked it was on purposely annoying <laughs> like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like oh my god shut the fuck up it's like some the long monologues that the way they eloquent their words and it rhymes and it, it, it's just beautiful storytelling. That's what you want to hear, right? But you heard her talking, yeah. you're like, oh my god, is it Jillian Hall singing fucking Dirt <laughs> Bone Raw? Like, um, the other thing that I kind of wanted to point out, um, I guess, not, not to interrupt you or anything, but like the, with the ending scene, with like yeah. the, with how like the lust theme and the acid rain and like the orgy party and everything, the song choice that they picked for that ending scene was, I feel like they did their homework with that. <laughs> they picked a, a really good song to go with like, like the, in, the intensity of like how disgusting that ending scene was supposed to be like, just in yeah. general, like how, well, like the, the orgy part of the party like is overall like lo- overlooked as disgusting and then just the way they die was just like oh god like you don't want to lo- you don't want to look at it but you just can't stop looking at it and then it gets worse because you're like then after you realize you can hear the moaning you're like oh fuck that's right that's not gonna kill them and mm-hmm. like oh that's that's one of the worst ways to go yeah um, but they died the way they lived because that, Take that, that the morality behind it. Um, <laughs> together inside each other. <laughs> um, the 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 main that one chick in there in the in the flashbacks was the MTV uh, Scream main character. Um, it's nice to see her in a different. Um, in this one, she's crude and cut and concise to the point. In the Scream mm-hmm. ones, she's way more timid and nice and like main character kind of thing yeah um, that's that's something you probably can cover because i avoided the mtv scream shows like the like the red death or the black plague <laughs> but you know that was that was just me so yeah so yeah in the in the kitchen scene uh they really they're they're having a casual conversation but it did sound like that it felt like a dramatic reading like it was like a acted out poetry yeah which is good when they do it. It's it's good when they do it. It's just that I was like, okay, that's definitely what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my final thing um, is uh, the uh, the quote that kind of offset everything and just made it made that part where if they didn't have a really good ending, I would have been like, okay, that was an episode. Um, whenever he said, "Picture the perfect cock and pussy, the most wettest and hardest." <laughs> I, I lost it from there, but oh my god! Yeah, both, both Ryan and I like, or both Rand and I looked at each other, and we we're just like wide-eyed, with our eyebrows lifted up, looking at each other, like, "What the hell is he talking about?" Yeah, <laughs> like, like, did he think that would work? Like, 
I don't see how that would actually. I could. I don't see that realistically like happening if you tried to convince your sibling. Like, you know what I mean? Like. Apparently, it almost did. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, she was ready. She was looking for the dude, too, and waiting on him. It's like she wanted to be that dude. Anyways, um, so that will uh, be my things. Now we can do our ratings. Unless, Do you have any other thoughts before we do those? Not really. I'm just interested in a, like a little five-minute intermission and then uh, episode three. And I think, I think after episode three, I'll probably be done doing these... Uh, recording sessions just for the evening but um just uh we'll get our ratings out for this episode like a little five minute break and then we'll get into this third episode and everything but, sounds good yeah. so for my episode rating um i am putting this episode at an an 8.5 um mm-hmm. fantastic ending but there were parts of it that i'm just like i don't like like i i know that's the point of it but I'm just knocking it down. I feel like that was an 8.5. Um, yeah. and, the, and then I feel like as the series hits right now, two episodes in, I'm putting in the series at 8 for me right now. Um, I would say for me this was this was a probably a solid 8 episode. Kind of agreeing with the same points that you were saying, but with the... Uh, me saying later on realizing oh they're doing it like this because that's how they wrote it they're, it's written to make you not like it so it's like oh they're doing their job but it's still like is like did you really have to say the perfect little cock in, the, in your hand yeah like that that one that one was up there with uh, with hill house whenever did you just punch my boob you know like <laughs> did we need that dialogue <laughs> like, I think series overall, it didn't really for me. I think for me, it's still a nine because I feel like that, like it's just granted. Yeah, this episode is a point lower than the last episode, but I still think as a series overall, it still holds up pretty strong as a nine because of the fact that I was like, oh, I don't like the content in the episode. Wait, they're doing it on purpose. I actually like what they're doing, even though I hate it. So well, the first we hit, on that. we've we've noticed people that are going to be dying and everything. Um, the 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 actors that are more talented, they're saving mm. till later in the show. Yeah, like like the guy who plays um, the dad in, in mm-hmm. Hill House, that guy. Mm-hmm. He's it looks like he's the last one to go, um, and he's probably the most talent. He's the has the most range. He's been in all. The shows, all four. I think maybe, uh, yeah, he's a three of the four shows. Um, so I'm, he, he he's killer. So I, I think that as we go down, you know, I think the the the, the demon lady has the it's gonna be at the very end because you know <laughs> she's been in all the shows. I think. <laughs> yep. Well, she was in a midnight mass, so. Yeah, I need to go back and watch that because I know you and um, what's his face watched it when he was still part of the crew. Yeah, and they can't. They had a different thing on there too. Well, mm. okay. Well, um, well, we got our ratings in here for episode two of the Fall of the House yeah. of Usher. Uh, we can go uh, go ahead and sign us out, and we'll we see you guys my- after episode three. Yes, this is Mike Check ninety five with Trigger Margin One and special guest Rain. Sending out.